Did you know that SAS Model Studio can help you easily interpret machine learning models? I'm going to show you how. There's a trade-off between interpretability and accuracy of models. We talk about sometimes white box or translucent, transparent models versus black box or opaque models. Black box or opaque models are actually more accurate than some of the traditional white box models. Unfortunately, this accuracy can sometimes be outweighed by the fact that they're not very interpretable. White box models are easy to interpret. Examples of white box or transparent models are regressions, decision trees, rules-based models. Examples of opaque or black box models are neural networks, random forests, and gradient boosting. To illustrate a white box, I'm going to use the example of limeade. We can easily see the ingredients. We see lime, ice, water. If we taste it, we can tell there's sugar. We can tell if it's mostly lime juice or if it's mostly sugar by the taste. This is comparable to a white box, such as a regression or a decision tree, where we can very easily tell what input had the most effect on our outcome. The black box model, on the other hand, is kind of like the key lime pie. There's a lot of ingredients in there. Things like condensed milk, sour cream, lime juice, lime zest, whipping cream, sugar, graham crackers, butter, eggs, all of this is in there. But it's really hard for me to tell, is there too much whipping cream or not enough sour cream or too much condensed milk, it's really difficult to figure that out because everything's been whipped and beaten and cooked. This is like a neural network where we have inputs that go through a bunch of different hidden layers with lots of things happening to them before we finally get our target or outcome. It's very difficult to go back and figure out which input was most influential just by looking at the neural network itself. Here are five techniques for model interpretability. Variable importance, partial dependence, LIME or local interpretable model agnostic explanations, ICE, individual conditional expectation, and kernel SHAP method. I'm going to show you how these work in Model Studio using the Home Equity Loan data. This is a standard data set that comes with SAS products where the target variable is called BAD. It's a response variable that's binary where one means the customer defaulted on the loan and zero means the customer did not default or is current on their loan payments. There are a bunch of input variables such as the number of major derogatory reports, the number of delinquent credit lines, debt to income ratio, and so on. Here's a picture of Model Studio. When I select the gradient boosting node, I have model interpretability here on the right. Once I expand model interpretability, I see global interpretability, which includes variable importance and partial dependence, and local interpretability, which is ICE, LIME, and kernel SHAP. The global interpretability will interpret basically globally for the whole model. Local interpretability, on the other hand, lets me look at specific observations. In my case of home equity loan applicants, I could look at specific applicants, or I could look at clusters of applicants. So let's go through our demonstration. Here I am in Model Studio. You can see I have a pipeline here with my data node, a logistic regression node, which I'm not worried about interpreting because logistic regression is a white box model, easy to interpret. Here I have my gradient boosting model. This one is difficult to interpret, so I'm going to go to my right pane, and you see I have the, my gradient boosting node selected. I'll go to my right pane. Here I have model interpretability. You can see I have global interpretability, which includes variable importance and partial dependency. I'll select both of those and scroll down I'll open up my local interpretability and select all three, ice plots, lime, and kernel shap. 
I'm going to leave the defaults, but notice that I can change a bunch of things here, such as my maximum number of kernel shap variables. I can specify my instances to explain to be random or specify up to five specific instances. Under Lime Kernel Shap Tables, I can add an explainer information table or an explainer fidelity table. Under my partial dependence or ice options, I can set the maximum number of variables, the number of observations, the number of tick points, and I could even truncate my lower and upper tails. Finally, I can set a random seed. I'll run this now by clicking Run Pipeline. My run has complete successfully, so I can look at the results of my gradient boosting node. And here you see I have model interpretability. I can look at my surrogate model variable importance and my model variable importance. If I expand this, I see that my surrogate model variable importance, my debt to income ratio, was the most important variable. And you can see these are all scaled to one here. In my model variable importance, I can also see my training importance and my standard deviation. You can see again that my relative importance here has been scaled to one. So in those cases, my debt to income ratio was the most important. Let's look at my partial dependence plot. This shows the relationship between the debt to income ratio and the predicted target, in this case, my likelihood of defaulting on a loan. So I can see here, when my debt to income ratio is less than 30, my likelihood to default is fairly low. But once I reach 30, you can see it jumps up here and stays steady again until around 40 debt to income ratio where it jumps up again. I can look at my other variables. For example, I can look here at my age of oldest credit line in months. So the longer I've had my oldest credit line, the less likely I am to default. Now let's look at our partial dependence and our ice plots. Our partial dependence line is in blue, the middle line. But I can see that my number 9001504 is in the dark tan, and that's much higher. It does kind of follow the same tendencies as my partial dependence, but I can see that it's really quite a bit higher. I do also see that it jumps around 30 and again around 40. I see for my other four groups that they really were not affected much by debt to income ratio at all. And again, I can look at other variables. I'll look at my Lyme explanation. And here I have five local instances. I see for the first one, if my delinquency value is zero, there's 22% less likely to default on a loan for this particular instance. And I see information for my other variables. I can select a different instance and I see I have a different pattern for that instance. And likewise for the other instances, each one has a different pattern. Finally, I'll look at my kernel SHAP values. Again, I have different instances. This is local interpretability, so I can select a specific loan applicant or a specific cluster of loan applicants. And I can see here when my delinquency is zero, I'm 26% less likely to default on the loan. And I have similar information for all my variables. I might just note that when I look at my model comparison, my gradient boosting model did significantly better than my logistic regression model. And that's why I wanna use the more complex model here, the gradient boosting model, but I wanna make it interpretable. So now you can see I have the best of both worlds. I can actually eat my key lime pie and have it too. We saw how easy it was with Model Studio in SAS Visual Data Mining and Machine Learning 8.5 on VIA 3.5, how easy it was to use model interpretability tools. With just the click of the button, we could get variable importance, partial dependence, ice, lime, and kernel shap. If you'd like to learn more about these methods and how they work, there are plenty of resources available for you. 
Generally, they use a white box method such as regression or decision tree, but for more details, look at these resources that I have listed. Here are a few of them, a few more, and a few more. I hope this has been helpful.